they say it's not nice to call people fat. But bitch, you are. You want me to call you skinny? Listen, we wouldn't even be having this conversation if you just buy and drink the damn tea. Drop down in the description box, click this link so you can stop getting offended when I do these ads. Bye. Y'all, this was one boring ass, dry ass episode of Married to Medicine, but I sat through the whole thing for an hour and watched it, so let my watch time not be in vain and let me do a video about it. Did Toya beg, borrow, and steal to get in her house? Miss Quad is back. And Contessa and Toya still can see eye to eye. Y'all wanna talk about it? Here it go. <laughs> That's a girl. This episode of Married to Medicine was kind of stale, y'all. It's like I'm not even really enthusiastic about talking about this. A few things we need to touch on. I ain't gonna hold you on the line too long. We're gonna get up out of here. I love how the episode opened up showing all the doctors working hard, leaving the office. Dr. Jackie said she had just delivered six babies. Eugene looked spent, Toya looked spent, Contessa looked tired. It gave us a glimpse into the people who are on the front lines, what it's really like with this whole COVID situation for those of us who don't operate or live in medical capacities. Um, the episode had me a little teary-eyed. I don't know if I'm a little emotional because I got leftover liquor in me from last night. But I teared up when they started showing the protest scene with Miracle and Dr. Heavenly doing her teeth. Dr. Heavenly did an amazing thing flying that girl in doing her teeth. Um, and not to mention, it was great publicity for her business. Like, Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Jackie both have done a very good job using this platform to brand themselves as the go-to people for teeth and the go-to person for women's health and having a baby. Um, the scene goes to Toya and Anila. We're still getting ready to get to know Anila. In this episode, we got to know her a little better. And... Thus far, I'm liking what I saw until we got to the very end. But is it me? Or was y'all taken aback when Toya said she played tennis uh, five days a week, two hours or more a day? Uh, it must be nice, honey. It must be real nice. Then they're complaining about having to help your damn kids. We're going to talk about it. Contessa brings Jackie to the office or whatever the case may be and get some pointers about what she should do in her practice and what's going on. And then they sit down and start talking and Contessa brings up the fact that she still feels a way that Scott did not support her in her medical school decision. Um, from my understanding, Scott and Contessa are gonna have some butt heads a lot this season and fuss and it feels as if they're just coasting through. You know how you, you, you just go along to get along but the issue really isn't resolved and I'm disappointed in the fact that Scott stopped therapy um, especially considering the fact that he's a doctor and while he may be a medical doctor and not a psychologist or whatever the case may be I, I feel as if Scott is surrounded around the profession of psychology enough to know that therapy does help and he and Contessa need it Unless he's got no intention on fixing a damn relationship, then that's a whole nother conversation and that's a whole different kind of therapist that they gonna need. Um, I'm with Jackie though. You and your husband are gonna work together. Um, this just feels like a recipe for disaster as far as uh, 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 Scott and Contessa are concerned. Uh, Anila's mom comes. <laughs> Anila Mama is a bad lady because she came to that lady house and brought all that shit. Kyron got off work and he was not pleased at all. He was like, there's food over there. Don't nobody want to come home from a long day of work and it'd be a lot of people in their house and a lot of noise and shit all out of place. So I totally get where Kyron is coming from. Then when he went up to change and came back down, it was stuff all over the counter. Now when he started complaining about the stuff on the counter, I was like, Kyra, you tripping. I mean, they're, they're eating. They're, they're, we're playing with this food. So, of course, it's going to be out. 
he was giving me a real OCDT, like every paper clip has got to be in its right place. We got our eye on you, Cameron. Let us find, don't let us find that you crazy. Um, Eugene comes home. And you know what baffled me? Toya, you got enough time in the day to play tennis for two hours a day. Help your kids. You complained about that. Eugene came home and had to cook dinner. What is you doing all day? And listen now, I'm not going to lie to you. I was the first person, you know, in the past to clown stay-at-home moms and housewives. Because I was like, bitch, you don't do shit all day. Why are you complaining? Y'all have educated me and I've evolved in my thinking and realized that being a mom is a difficult responsibility and there's a lot of things to juggle. However, okay, there are still eight hours in the workday. And you feeling like you have to stand over your kids for them to do their work, that's not a time issue, that's a discipline issue. I bet if you stand your ass behind them with a damn belt, they read that damn screen. Your boys are, you don't got little kids that, need, that, that you need to help them do their takeaways and their division. Your kids is grown, grown in the school since they can, they, they can read the instructions and buzz in the teacher. You shouldn't have to stand over him. And you talk about homeschooling is hard. I'm pretty sure it's challenging when it cuts into your playing tennis two times a day uh, and didn't even have time to cook for them. And you didn't even cook for the damn man. And here's the thing for me, right? So, you know, Toya, in my opinion, is caught between two worlds. One world is, you know, I'm a princess. I don't work. I've got money. My husband has a good job. And I've got access to all these things. I'm a fabulous housewife. But then, as it relates to the ladies, I think there's an issue with Toya and, and value. And them valuing Toya and Toya feeling um, not as accomplished as some of the ladies. I think, especially when it comes to Toya and Contessa, it really is a respect dynamic that's going on between those two. And I've always said this, you know, once you lose respect for somebody, it's pretty hard to, to, to carry on any type of relationship with them because you just don't value them as friends or as, as associates. And I really think that's what's going on with Contessa and Toya. I think Contessa doesn't really value Toya. And... Toya is, is, I don't know, sensing it and feeling away. You know, maybe she feels like, does Contessa think she's better than me? I don't know what it is between those two, but they seem to not be able to get on the same page. And I know that y'all are not fighting about she didn't take my shoes off at, at, at the house. Like, this is so much bigger. I don't know why Toya would get as mad with Contessa challenging that. And I don't know why Contessa would have an issue about taking her shoes off in the lady down house. It's her house, her rules. Um, but it just looks as if at this point they just not going to be friends. So Quad shows up to Heavenly's house or whatever. And Heavenly shows her this video. Now Heavenly, you was all messy for that because Quad was doing just fine. And then you gave her that video and showed her that mess. And Quad went in on that lady. So what's this bed, borrow, and steal situation? Um, I ain't gonna spill all the tea because it's not my business to spill. And one of the people that it involves, um, they didn't sign up for celebrity or whatever the case may be. But the word on the curb. The word on the curb is Look, I'm going to just tell the shit I'm going to get a phone call about this I already know So the word on the curb is This lady was getting ready to go through a divorce with her husband Okay and so what she was doing was pulling the shiny O'Neal and she was siphoning off the money and hiding it. She was planning for her exit. The lady gave Toya the money to hold. And when the lady needed her money back, 
Toya ain't have all the lady money. And that, that's the short of it. And that's where the bag borrow and steal to get that house came in at. So they was, they, the, the word is they were struggling to get qualified for a house for that much. They didn't have enough money to build the pool in, 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 the, in the wraparound mortgage. So Toya took out another $100,000 personal loan to finish off the pool, plus whatever amount of that lady money that you stuck your hands in and took took your own dead time return it to her. Um, you know, Eugene and Toya had financial issues in the past and it feels as if they may be on their way to financial issues again or like Kwa said, she gonna work the hell out of Eugene or spend the money before it's even earned. Like, don't get me wrong, it's great to have nice things. You know, bitch, I love some nice things. But it feels like, you know, Toya has something to prove to the world and they do spend a lot of dog on money. And granted, you can't tell nobody how to spend their damn money. If it's theirs and they got it, hell, spend it. That's what it's there for. But everything got to be done in moderation and in order and in decency and to protect your future. I'm sorry, I'm going to tell you one of the most beautiful things, feelings that, that I have now is my bills are so far below what I earn, it just gives you a sense of comfort knowing that you ain't scratching and surviving. And you know, yeah, you may make two two million dollars a year, million dollars a year, but if you got nine hundred ninety nine thousand dollars in bills and overhead, then what quality of life do you really have? For me, and I've always said this, I, I'm just not, I'm not the mansion girl. Like I just think it's excessive. I'm not the mansion girl. I'm not the four, five, six, seven car girl. I'm not the all of these jewels and shit. That's just not me. I really do enjoy the relatively simple life accented with a few nice things. But people have a right to like what they like. I'm just not finna work myself to the bone to obtain those things when I can live a much simpler life. Um, but y'all spending $25,000 a month, I mean, a year per child on school, all the bills. Hell, no wonder y'all ass selling that damn house. Somebody find out if the house still on the market. Um, it's the people buying it. Uh... Anila has an event and she invites Contessa to the event. Now it was a very nice event, Reiki. I love that we're learning something about different culture, so on and so forth. Here was my thing. Anila, you have not been a part of this equation long enough to be trying to bridge the gap between those two. It just wasn't your place. You really have no dog in that fight. You don't know Contessa and you barely know Toya. So the fact that you're so vested in bridging them together uh, is a little insane to me. Now, I met Anila um, when I went to Atlanta and Contessa had an event. I was there and they were filming. And one thing I'm going to say about Anila that rubbed me the wrong way in that particular scene that they were doing is that it felt like she was trying to be a reality star. You know what I'm saying? It felt Instead of just existing and letting the cameras roll, it feels like she was trying to play up to the cameras and be what she's deemed a reality star supposed to be. I kind of got those vibes from this event because after Contessa chose to leave, I don't understand why Anila was making a big deal about her leaving. And you're just gonna leave my event like that? I mean, what was wrong with her leaving? There was a conflict, and why are you so hurt that she left? She stayed through the majority of it. Um, I think it was reasonable for her to leave. The only other uh, alternative was for her and Toya to sit there and start cursing and stuff in front of your parents. Anila, why you got your face so far up Toya's ass, you ought to be mad at her for being that disrespectful in front of your mama using them cuss words and stuff. Toya is black, and we know better. You don't cut up like that in front of people, damn parents and you know better. And the thing that's throwing me is that it just feels as if Toya is hell bent on having an issue. It's like she's hell bent on fussing with Contessa. Um, and I just don't understand why they won't just let the shit go. Just let it go. At the point, Toya, in which you fuss about the issue is she want to take her shoes up at my house 
and disrespecting in my house, it's like, girl, come on, this shit is so petty. It's one of those things how you can tell that they just don't like each other because when you don't like somebody, they can say good morning to you and you'll find a way to pick that apart and make it an issue. And that's what it feels like Toya is doing when it comes to Contessa. I want y'all to pay special attention to Contessa's exit as it relates to Anila and Anila's mom and her snatching away from Anila's mom because that is going to become a huge issue later down the line uh, as the episodes continue. Y'all, that's all I got. I ain't really got no more. This episode actually was boring as hell. Um, and I'm hoping that the rest of the season is not like this particular episode because if, if it is, very demanding people, y'all in trouble. Let me get in here and watch Love and Marriage Huntsville and I'll call y'all later. Bye.